Hey y'all, this is Nathan Rourke. Today, we're gonna start a series of lessons on the idea of shelter, emergency shelter, survival shelter. Shelter is an early on priority when it comes to survival of you and your family. And in fact, it comes down to three to four hours. Most people in survival situations that don't make it, they die of something we call exposure, which means basically they die of hypothermia, getting too cold, or hyperthermia, getting too hot. And so the idea of surviving with shelter is all about maintaining that magical number of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the average human being's body core temperature. We as human beings are pretty fragile when it comes to that maintenance. And so there's some really important concepts that I want to get across to you all in the family defense world uh, to keep you alive in these types of situations. So today we're going to start off real basic. And one of the biggest concepts I'm going to get uh, to you today is this idea of conductive heat loss. One of the biggest ways that we lose heat, that precious 98.6 degrees, is through a heat transfer through touching other things that are colder than we are. And most importantly, the earth. The earth tends to be colder than we are all the time, everywhere we go. And so if I were to sit down on the bare earth and I were to sit here long enough without replenishing any of my calories, without boosting my metabolism to create energy and heat, I would eventually freeze to death. Now, depending on temperature, depending on climate, depending on scenario, that number could be days. It could take me days to freeze to death. It could take me uh, hours to freeze to death. But nonetheless, the bottom line is, is that heat moves on this planet from warmer bodies to colder bodies. And when I sit down as a small, warm human being on the large, cold earth, heat immediately begins leaving my body and goes into the earth. And that's a situation that I'm not gonna win. The earth's gonna continue sucking my heat out until I'm dead. And so uh, we gotta stop conductive heat loss, y'all. Now, on the market today, there's a lot of um, things you can buy that stop conductive heat loss. You know, any of the sleeping pads that you can buy for camping, thin foam pads like this ridge rest here, uh, or inflatable pads like this thermo rest, you know, a lot of people think that they're designed for your uh, creature comforts, but in reality, their priority is to provide an insulating barrier between you and the earth to keep that conductive heat loss from happening. So they keep the heat in your body and keep the earth from sucking it out. I prefer a solid foam ridge rest type rest uh, because, y'all, it's only a matter of time. And all of my experience with thermorests, it's only a matter of time before they spring a leak. They start. Uh, losing air on you and then of course with when temperature varies and and the air uh, contracts you lose firmness of, of, of the inflatable mats as well so a good solid uh, mini cell foam you can't go wrong with it there's so many uh, uses of this piece of equipment so number one it keeps your heat in your body and keeps the earth from sucking it away number two it has lots of first aid applications um, all kinds of great survival applications in this piece of equipment but there's gonna be times when you don't have these um, commercial on the market types of, of, of barriers to protect, to protect your heat. And so you need to deal with what you have in the woods. And the biggest, best thing I can teach you as far as keeping the heat in your body when it comes to using things that you can find in the woods are deciduous leaves, all right? So here in my environment, this is something that's easy to come by. If you were to move further north into the boreal north woods, you'd be replacing these deciduous leaves with spruce boughs and fir boughs. Um, but today I'm gonna be focusing on leaves. So leaves will replace these mats as far as keeping the heat in your body, keeping the earth from sucking it out. But the thing that you need to understand about leaves is it's not the actual barrier of the leaf itself. It's the ability of the leaf to trap dead air in between all of its surfaces. So when you pile up lots and lots of leaves and you make a large leaf mat, you create lots and lots of dead air space that's trapped in between each one of these leaf surfaces. And that dead air space is the best insulation you can have. And so when we pile leaves up, we create thousands and thousands of little tiny dead air spaces that then our body heat can heat up and that turns into an insulating barrier between us and the elements. Uh, so today I'm gonna teach you the first step and the basic level of using leaves as an insulation barrier. Um, so 
Now here I am sitting on a south-facing hillside, and the reason I chose this south-facing hillside, of course, is because of the solar heat, the radiant heat coming from the sunshine. It's been moving across this hillside all day long. It's been warming up this hillside. It's been warming up the leaves. It's kind of like preheating an oven for me. The, the, the sun has done a lot of work for me, and so my body won't have to work as hard tonight when I sleep in my leaf bed. It's gonna be drier on the south-facing slope. Uh, anytime you can use the sun to your advantage when it comes to making shelter, do so. The sun's gonna be a life-saving aid, all right? The other thing I want you to know is I chose about halfway up this hillside. I'm not down in the creek bottom because down in the creek bottom you have moving water and moving water is a colder place to be. All right, moving water cools the air down because of the specific, specific heat transfer and then also it increases convective currents of the airflow down in the, in the valley bottoms where that moving water is carrying air and cooling it down. So I wanna get away from that, that moving cold water. I wanna to get to where the solar exposure has, has preheated the hillside for me and already done a lot to dry out these leaves. And, um, and we're gonna meander across this hillside and see what we can find as far as a place to make a, a quick, easy shelter for the night. This is our most basic shelter that we're gonna get in today. So let's take a walk and see what we can find. Okay, y'all. This is the spot that I've chosen for tonight's bed. Now, obviously, when you're on a hillside, flat areas to sleep are hard to come by. So you're gonna have to kind of work with what you have. Now, before you decide to stop for any amount of time anywhere, whether it's a long rest break or an overnight sleep, I want you to take in consideration a few key things always. Okay, one is, is there anything above you that could fall on you and kill you during the night? So you have dead branches, dead trees, things we call widow makers or deadfalls. So we want to look above us, make sure nothing's up there that could potentially come down if the wind were to really pick up through the night so I can sleep safe in that way. The other thing I want you to always consider is drainage. Right? If it rains really hard, where's the water going to flow? How is it going to flow away from your sleeping spot? Um, ideally, you're going to create a sleeping spot that's not going to be a puddle should it rain really hard. Now, you don't always get everything you're looking for, and so sometimes you're going to have to make some compromises, and that's just life. That's real. The other thing that I look for when I'm kind of choosing a spot to sleep is I do a good sweep of the area to get to know my surroundings, check out any hazards. I'm looking for ground bee nests. I'm looking for snake habitats. I'm looking for uh, a lot of sign of animal use. You know, am I sleeping in someone else's backyard? So I give that a good awareness, tune in as I'm moving around my area. And does it have the resources I need for a good night's sleep? If I end up having to carry leaves for half a mile to make my bed, that's a lot of calories out the door, and I need my calories to survive. Remember, you know, calories in versus calories out. That's the basic survival equation. And so I want to work efficiently. I want to be smart about where I pick to sleep. Tonight, you know, my biggest concern is not rain. It is wind. It's been blowing hard all day long, so my primary concern is getting out of the wind for my shelter tonight. I don't want that convective heat loss to add to my cold sleeping tonight. I want to think about how can I get out of the wind. Looking at the weather patterns, I don't think I'm going to get any rain, so if I can compromise and take a spot that might hold a little water but yet get me out of the wind, I'm going to choose that tonight. But you need to think about these things and make deliberate, intentional choices. So here, what I've done is I've found a nice dip in the ground. Now, I'm sure you're saying dip in the ground, doesn't that hold water? Well, it absolutely does, you're right. Up above this dip, I've noticed that there's a ridge line that's gonna shed water away from this dip. Sure, if it rains hard enough, I will be sleeping in a puddle. But again, I told you I'm not really looking for this idea of rain tonight. My main concern is getting out of the wind and protecting my heat from conductive heat loss from soaking into the earth. So I, I like this dip. It's got good wind break for me. And also I have this a nice natural, uh, nice natural dip here to hold my leaves in place. Because what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna build up a leaf mattress in this nice natural depression. I'm gonna build up uh, some log boundaries around where I'm building my leaf mattress to help hold the leaves in place to keep them from scattering out through the night. The logs might even help me break up the wind even further, even more than the natural topography does. But in this most basic, quick overnight shelter, what we're going to be doing is essentially piling up leaves, keeping them in place, making a really nice mattress, and getting out of this wind. 
And so that's our goal for the next little bit. So um, I'm gonna take a minute and, and uh, get to work. Okay, y'all, so we're about 10 minutes into the process here, and I just wanted to show you what I've done so far and why I've done it. If you look down here, you see I've created a little bit of a log framework to hold my leaves in. It's what I mentioned before, but I wanted you to see it without leaves. This is doing two things. One is it's holding my leaves in place and keeping them from scattering out through the night as I roll around. And two is creating more of a wind block to the northwest. This is where most of the wind and the weather comes in from in this area of the country and I want to make sure that I can get out of this wind tonight. Like I mentioned, this is why I'm choosing this indentation, is to get out of the wind. Well, I've also chosen this spot because of these mountain laurels here to help break the wind and by building up the, the log wall here just out of quick gathered logs, I'm creating more of a wind break so the wind's going to go over the top of me and not suck away or, or pull away my valuable heat through that convective heat loss process, all right? So the other thing I want you to notice is I've, I've taken a layer off. When you are in a survival situation, you wanna work in a way where you are not sweating, if you can help it. The Inuit have a really great saying up in the Arctic Circle, they say if you sweat, you die. So there's two things happening here. One is, if I break a sweat and I start pouring sweat, I'm gonna cool down through the evaporative heat loss process. Again, robbing that 98.6 degrees away from me. This is survival, y'all. I need to keep it inside. So I'm working just under the sweat level. And two, by working at about that 60% maximum output, I'm burning a more steady fuel. I'm burning my fat fuel source, not my high energy carb fuel source that I might need to save if I got to run away from danger or fight off an attack. So I'm burning a real constant fuel source by working at about 60% efficiently efficiency i'm not sweating and i want to kind of keep at that level as i do this project because the last thing i want to do is bed down tonight with all my clothing soaking wet with sweat so now our next step is going to be to kind of refine this wall just a little bit and then fill it full of leaves so we're going to keep on working All right, so you can see now we've filled up the inside of that framework with leaves. So from the top of the leaves down to the bottom of the earth, we have about two and a half feet, maybe close to three feet at its height of leaves that are generally non-compressed. Now in the process, I did kind of pat the leaves down, adjust them, pat them down, because ultimately in the end when I sleep in this, I'm going to take this two and a half to three foot leaf bed and my body weight through the night will compress it down to about four to six inches. And that, my friends, is what you have to have to have an effective conductive heat insulator. Four to six inches of compressed leaves with all those little dead air spaces in between the leaves will keep the body heat in your body and not getting sucked out by the earth. So this is the beginnings. Now. This shelter, so to speak, right here, right now, it's taken me about half an hour to create. And the reason I wanted to start off by teaching you this shelter is that it's fast. If we were gonna go into a full-blown debris hut or lean-to, we would be having hours of shelter building uh, time ahead of us. And sometimes you don't have hours before darkness falls. Sometimes you don't figure out your loss until it's too late or figure out you need a shelter until it's too late. So this is a quick, efficient, um, it's a good use of time, y'all. This is gonna help keep you alive for a one night stay. Now, of course, in a survival situation, every day is a new journey and you're always working to improve your situation. So I wouldn't turn this into a multiple night stay. This would be my first night emergency stay. And then tomorrow I'd get up and if I slept cold, I would improve my shelter. So think about that. So as you get into it, go ahead and put the leaves where you want to put them. One more note of caution, y'all. When you're gathering leaves on a nice, sunny, south-facing slope, don't think for an instant that you're the only critter that wants to sleep on this slope. You need to be aware that these nice, sunny, south-facing slopes uh, bring all kinds of wildlife, some of which you don't want to pick up in a big scoop of leaves, like a copperhead 
or if you have other venomous snakes in your area, you want to be aware of that because they could be basking in the sun on this nice fall day. It's been getting cool at night. It's a little bit warm right now, but um, a, you know, a reptile could very well be up here in the sun basking uh, in these leaves. So don't be blind, be aware of what you're doing as you're going about this. But ideally, once you get it all nice and padded in, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna tuck my shirt in because I don't want a bunch of leaves down my pants and up my shirt. But you just wanna ease in. And you can see how much it's compressing already just with my body weight sitting on it for a couple seconds. Get the leaves where you want them and make sure everything feels pretty good. Now through the night, I will continue to sink and compress and this windbreak will become more effective. I may even build it up just a tiny bit more before night falls to make sure that I have a good break from the wind coming across my body. But this is a pretty comfortable bed. I mean, there's no doubt it's comfortable as far as cushioning. The leaves provide plenty of cushioning. But uh, as far as insulation, it's doing a real good job as well. Um, so keep in mind, y'all, very quick, easy, basic introduction to conductive heat loss and what you need to do to thwart it. This is a life-saving skill. Get out there and practice it because gathering leaves, believe it or not, you're gonna laugh at me, but gathering leaves is a skill in and of itself. You develop techniques to make you more efficient and a lot better at it. And in this world, you know, around here in these mountains, these leaves are a difference between life and death. I've spent many, many nights in leaf beds and in debris huts, and I tell you what, if you learn how to do it well, it makes all the difference in the world. All right, so get out there and practice, and look forward to our next uh, lesson on shelter. We're gonna get more involved and more detailed. Y'all take care.